our topic of discussion today, which is going to be about how to read transits. And what I'd like to do is be a little bit more specific and do my best to make it uh, comprehensible to a newcomer. So for those of you who have been doing this for a long time, might be a little bit redundant, but for those of you who are brand new, I'm going to try and remember to give you some instruction on how to evaluate what's happening in the transit in relationship to your own personal human design. Because that's what a friend would do. Happy fourth line day to you. As you can see, it's a nice fourth line day. So that's one of the things that I want to invite you to take a look at first when you're looking at the just now transit. And as you can see here, we're in mybodygraph.com and under uh, body graph here, you can download the just now image. You can create a new uh, transit chart. Some of these are upgrades, but for now, I'm going to talk to you about the just now chart. As you can see, I'm just refreshing it. And what you're going to find is that we have the date at the top, so you can see it's April 25, 2021, and about 9.02 in the morning, my local time, hello from sunny Sedona, Arizona, you can see that it's the juxtaposition cross of caring. Hi, gate of caring, nourishment. <laughs> gate 27 is about caring for one's tribe. It's a very tribal, um, you know, responsive activation that is about making sure that the tribe is protected, cared for, nourished, preserved, educated, okay? So that's one of the things that we're gonna focus on as our topic of discussion is how do we use this beautiful just now transit in our own personal design? I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. It's not too hard because what you're looking at are basic fundamental conditioning factors that influence your design to be different than you already are. And all of us are swimming in a sea of consciousness that we are translating through our physical form through the experience of consciousness being consciousness in form. Hopefully that's not too esoteric for you. But I'm gonna break down the step-by-step -step process of what you would do, and here's the easy way first. Easy way first is to go and create, I'm gonna find my body graph. Uh, that was my old name. Hello, Lavina. your name has changed for a while now. Create new and just now connection. Okay, so as you can see on my screen, this is something from the just now on the right hand side, the activations in green. And then you're gonna see all of my blue activations, that's me. Or in this terms applied to you, that would be you, okay? If you were to create a new just now transit. So I know my design really well. And so I know this is not normal for me. Neither is this as far as the colored in activations, neither is that, okay? So whatever is really standing out as very different from your own design, those are the places we're gonna be really easily homogenized, depending on if you believe your mind story inside of your head about yourself, or if you follow your own decision-making, your personal strategy and authority. Okay, so what we're looking at here, just real briefly, the head center is about inspiration, trying to answer everybody else's questions, getting lost, losing focus, getting perhaps confused. And for today's transit, if you will, looking at the other side, what's gonna happen is you're always trying to figure out the mysteries of life. Have you noticed <laughs> that that might be something you're trying to rationalize inside of your head? Well, if that means this, then this means that. And you know, if I do this, then maybe it could mean that. And just humans are, <sighs> consummate rationalizers, aren't we? We are pretty funny when it comes to rationalizing. Well, I made this decision because of my self or my not self, because the mind likes to figure out stuff, doesn't it? It likes to have the answers to the big why in the sky. I got the why in the sky question mark here. Where is my 61? There it is. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for being a little goofy today. Anyway, what you're looking at is my mind will lose focus and try to answer everybody else's questions instead of the questions that I know are most important for me personally to contribute to you because I do have a questions gate. I do have a conscious focus, okay? So the better you know your own body graph, the better you're gonna be able to learn to translate transits. So the reason why I'm doing this like this is somebody asked me, where can I go to read about how to, um, you know, figure out transits? And there is, at the end of this video, actually, um, I'll give you a link. Hopefully somebody remind me, ask me for the link. At the end, I'll post it wherever you find this video. A link to a book by Ra about transits, okay? But 
really, that book is a little bit more advanced than a brand newcomer. You really need to know your foundations of human design. Hi, Living Your Design, Rave ABCs, Rave, Rave Cartography. It teaches you the fundamental aspects of the design so that you can do this important work that I'm demonstrating for you here, which is learn human design through observation of transits in your own body. The best, the most um, precise way of learning the human design system is through your actual physical experience. That's why I'm doing this, because I'm doing it for me, not just for me, but for you, of course. It's fun to do, to go, oh my God, I'm seeing that movie. I'm seeing how everybody is, you know, wanting to have skills and wanting to find the focus. And that's just the movie that we've just moved into. Okay. So when we're looking at uh, going through the centers again, basic big picture view first, and then we'll dive into the details if we have time and energy before my next class. Um, the center that is about conceptualization. Remember, this was inspiration. Here we have conceptualization is being activated in my own design because I have the harmonic gate or the other side of the channel. Please don't call it the other half because they are a quantum illusion that come together and create something more than what just the two. One plus one does not equal two. It equals three. Something unique and very different. Okay. Got scolded by um, Alaka Nandias one time for calling it the other half of the channel. No, 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 it's the other side of the channel. Okay, so the 24 is actually being activated. Let's see, Uranus, as you can see, woo, we got some interesting two energy. No wonder I'm feeling so energized right now. The 24 is about, remember, we're looking at <laughs> rationalization and there's a lot of addiction to rationalization in humanity. Hi, before human design, I thought I was the best at rationalizing any decision. I knew I was, I was certain I was before human design, right? Because the mind thinks that it is what it's not, okay? What it's not. And what it's not is if you've got one side of the channel and you don't have the other side of the channel, that notness is what your mind fixates on as what you are. That is the not self purpose in relationship to that center, that center in an undefined state in your body graph, when it becomes defined, now has certainty in this respect, now has some kind of illusion of consistency because the mind grasps onto, holds onto adaptive condition strategies in order to mitigate the, the dilemma of the openness. The dilemma of the openness in your body graph, any place that is in, in this example, hi, undefined heart center, the dilemma of the openness is you get homogenized deeply. When there is a gate activation that is on this side of the, of the channel in that heart center, in this example, in that open center, that is your hook into learning about that center. Everything else, this is wisdom potential. This is wisdom potential. This is wisdom potential when it comes to the application or implementation in this case of control in my design. Okay. So that 21 in my design, my va Venus, so it's values relating, it's my standards for relationships. What I need in my own personal life, because it's my design, it's in blue. I need to be in control of what I do for work where I go to live, who I love, and who I bond with, especially as a projector. Can I initiate those things? No, because I'm a projector. I have to be recognized and invited and my way of making decisions emotionally clear before I make a decision about what to be in control of. When it comes to my personal finances, though, my sphere of influence, though, it is my decision and no one else's. All of us are here to be our own authority. And in our humandesign.live website right now, our community learning platform where I deliver my classes to you, and I also post these kinds of videos for my tribe, I've written an article about gate 21 and 45 if you'd like to learn more about the channel of money, a design of a materialist, and the strength of management. Okay, so going back to, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with me today, that's okay. What we're looking at is that we have, okay, what you're going to do next is, I'm just going to clear this off. We looked at that. 
okay? Lavina in the not self is going to be losing focus and trying to pretend to be certain about her awareness in the not self, okay? So inside of my mind about myself, the mind is not you. <laughs> my mind is going to try to answer everybody else's questions, but lose focus in doing so and pretend to be certain about my rationalizations, my addiction. And I'm saying the word addiction for a reason because this is the keynote of Uranus here in unusualness, chaos, and innovation for the whole global programming of everybody. Now we have this, the difficult but possible task of overcoming irrationality. This is the line of the addict. We're learning the powerful attraction of regressive forms and on the flip side, irrationality maintained and legitimized by success. Okay, so that's the imprinting everybody's getting right now, thanks to our weird and wacky friend, Uranus, which is eccentric. That's what's going on with me. There we have it, eccentric, eccentricity. It's a fully harmonic channel. You guys, I teach from experience, can you tell? I'm sharing with you my personal feelings and my self-expression with you in camera, live on camera now, because I feel comfortable with myself as I am without trying to self-censor like I used to. Oh no, only come on camera when you feel okay, when you've got perfect makeup, when you look great, you know, all that stuff. This morning I was like, can I really do this today? I don't know if I'm in the mood, if I have the energy. But yeah, I found myself driving to work, beautiful sunny Sarah, Arizona with all of those red rocks. Looking at this for you, with you, is one of my joys. And it's weird, this awareness. It's freaky, this difference. And to be yourself and to be freaky and different is one of the be most beautiful gifts you can give the world. Because when you love yourself as you are, you live the role, the life expression of you-ness that you are here to embody in this life. And that's my hope for you. And that's what I want for you. My desire is that you learn human design if you're here and listening to this wacky blah, 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 that you actually apply this information in your life. So let's go back to the practical application of transits, learning transits and human design again. Type, strategy, and authority, centers, circuitry, gates, channels, really important to grasp before you can do this for yourself. Now, let's go back into centers. What you're looking at is Lavina doesn't have the sacral center. <laughs> Not all the time. It has a sacral center. It, oh God, I'm objectifying myself. That's okay. The sacral center in my own design is undefined, not consistent. So hi, when there's energy coming through because my activations are turned on, oh my God, I am a super uh, amazing right now, fake manifesting generator <laughs> right now at this moment. Can you tell? I've got this Mercury that's woo, being powered by my 14. And this is not me, of course. This is the expression of me in this moment. And I've got also Venus. Look at Venus and Mercury are conjunct, we could say, or exactly right next to each other in the same gate. Ooh, what a beautiful thing. Gate two, the gate of vision, the gate vision in a small group of people, the gate of the direction of the self the home of the magnetic monopole, the beauty of having direction through unique identification, unique, so unique this too is to you and to me, but not in the transits. It's not unique. It's homogenizing everybody, everybody on this planet who has 14, raise your hand. You've got the Mercury and Venus on the other side of the channel <laughs> that is creating the channel of the beat, the beat. Design of the keeper of the keys, as Rob would say, keys to the kingdom. What is the kingdom? Everything. This is the only channel that has the capacity to have an individual activation in an individual, a different way that it shows up in a small group, three to five people, and a different way it shows group, go shows up in a large group of people. And that is between 10 to 16 or more. So this is a very, very different, unique channel. There is nothing like it in the body graph. You want to learn more about that channel, go to our website. You're going to find last week, I believe it was, I published an article about the 14. So it speaks briefly to that. Okay. From experience, gate of wealth. Hello, I've got a message for you. you what you're looking at now, I'm going to go a little bit deeper right now because it's important to understand symbolism. 
Okay, symbolism, especially if you're learning how to interpret a chart that has a bunch of symbols, including numbers, which are symbols. The undefined sacral center in a not self state overzealous does too much because it doesn't know when enough is enough. So it's just going, 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 going. All right, not knowing when to have boundaries, not knowing when to stop in the not self state, tries to do everything all by itself, doesn't want to ask for help because it doesn't want to be appear like it can't do anything by itself. Oh, I have a child who has a 3420. They want to do everything all by themselves, don't they? If you're 3420, very independent, powerful kind of person. Got it undefined in the not self state? You overdo it, in my case, with caring. And if you've got the sun right here, you might, with this activation coming in, that and that's not you. Let me let me show you something real quick. 27, not in your design. If you have this defined or undefined, the sacral center, and that 27 is coming in, guess what you're going to be influenced with? Caring for other people. Here's the line of generosity, okay, in the fourth line. Fourth line is friendship, bonding through, friendship that is about brother-sister. Aren't they very generous when they're your brother or your sister or a friend that treats you like family? Here's the line of our role, genetic role gates, 50, 27 and 59 are role gates. Here's the line of why fourth lines are very generous or not sometimes. Okay, because a fourth line is about generosity or not. Natural sharing of attained abundance. So this sun is coming in, the core essence of what the transit is bringing against 70% of the neutrino stream bombarding us is coming from the sun, grounded in the earth. So that's a major component of our transit activations. That is going to influence you. Now, if you're aware you have a little bit of an edge, so to speak, to remember to go, oh, strategy and authority. Don't just automatically offer without checking in with strategy and authority. That's what I would advise anybody today, okay? Because we're gonna be influenced. Influenced is a great line for the fourth line because fourth lines are very influential. The more you know them, the more they influence you. So the more they want to know you, so the more that they can influence you. I know your trick. <laughs> it's not a trick, it's a reality. The fourth line is very much about being influential. You know, this having this ability of in this context, being able to support others with the attained abundance. Where's Lavina's abundance? My mind, because this is where my mind, the imprinting of my mind in this life has happened in this quarter of, oops, wrong side, on the back of me, initiation purpose fulfilled through mind. My life purpose is fulfilled by sharing my experiences, abstract circuitry, and my feelings here in the gate of feelings and my fate with you. So going back to what these symbols stand for, I want you to see that the transit is bringing in in the gate 30, hello Jupiter, transiting over my sun right now. Can't stop thinking about educating children and expanding my feelings to reach more people and perhaps my, um, my sphere of my uh, influence. God, I can see it right now, the transit. Attempting to imprint upon me the importance of a personal law and protection that values education. Jupiter is a great educator. He is by Jove. He is the home of the Jovian archive. He is the Akashic records holder. Why? Ra named his human design system corporation Jovian archive. Okay. So right now you see that there is a detriment. We're looking at the expression of one side of the coin of the line of burnout in gate 30, 30, the gate of fates and feelings and the fourth line, fourth lines, this is why you burn out because it's an unrealistic pace that begs misfortune. Could you see earlier how much energy I had? I had to consciously tone myself down. Otherwise, I'm gonna be burned out before I go and teach my next class. Okay, so we can see the influence. Now, specifically to me influence, you can see that there's a little green triangle pointed down. Here, if we go look at the Jupiter, there's a little white triangle pointed down. 
Why is it pointed down? Because anytime Jupiter imprints that gate at that line, here we have the uncontrollable uncontrollable expansion with the inevitable bursting of the bubble. Uncontrollable feelings and accompanying emotional outbursts. Do you know anybody who's a gate 30 with line 4? In detriment. Do they have uncontrollable emotional outbursts? Oh boy, I'm having an uncontrollable emotional outburst with you, or was until I got a handle on it, um, because of this energy also as well and to, okay? Everything in context to you is the important piece that I want to remind you about transits. It condition us, conditions us, it homogenizes us in the openness, okay? Like I mentioned here, but it can so too influence us even if we're defined in our body graph, okay? You can see that clearly right there, that green, standing for the green on the right hand side there of the transit is being brought over to influence my design in that way. Why? Jupiter, powerful planet that he is. These are the gods, if you will. <laughs> you know, these are energetic influences upon you, me, humanity, everything that has a um, body graph. Remember, human design is not on only human design. It's the design of forms that Ra was given. Every form, alive or not, has a body graph. And some of us have, you know, activations that are different than others, but we all have this template. For us as humans, that's the movie. That's our template of what we experience within the framework of the programming matched up to our design. So again, the better you know your design, the better and the foundations of human design, the better you're going to be at these transit reports for yourself. I recommend that you do this first thing in the morning for you, for yourself. Or if you don't have time in the morning, look at the after uh, your busy day, because everybody's busy, busy, busy. That's the new cycle of experience that we're all moving into. Busy, busy, busy. Don't have time for you. Doing my own thing. At the end of the day, before you shut off your computers and your, your, your laptops and all of that, you know, phone stuff before you turn it off for the night, an hour before bed, please, so that you can get that blue screen out of your face and get some good night's rest. Take a look at the transits. Read the keynotes. Can you see, do you recognize those energies in your day? Relate that to the actual experience, recall of your memory, reviewing your day, which is a really good habit, especially for you projectors, because it helps develop your wisdom about others. In this context to everybody, if you do this at the end of the day, it helps develop your wisdom about the conditioning elements of the transits and how it influences or impacts your own design. Okay, so that's hopefully enough of that for there. So now going back to What's going on here? What are these little symbols right there? Well, we have Mercury and Venus. So let's take a look and see how these activations are being influenced there. I'm just going to click on this so you can see the whole channel. Yeah, we've got the receptive, gate two, direction of the self, 14. On my side, I've got a couple of them, possession and great measure, the gate of power skills. Okay, so we can see on this side of my body graph, my actual body graph, my normally exalted 14 is pulled into the detriment. Why? Well, if we click on it, we can see that Venus herself brings a detriment or a challenge, if you will, one side of the coin of what it is to be arrogant, the ever-present risk inherent in positions of power. That innate dignity that is a key to power for me also has the influence of Venus today with this innate recognition of those without power fueling the illusion of superiority. So in my head about myself, my mind could go, well, I'm superior because I know this and I have this direction and blah, 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 blah. Helpful so that you won't get lost and stuck in your mind's dramatizing of what it thinks it knows in the world out there of what you're experiencing. This is the illusion that you're living in. Okay, trapped in the illusion, all of us. Until you awaken to the awareness of self versus not self, you're trapped in the illusion. I'm hopeful that at some point you'll be able to 
watch the illusion rather than identify with the illusion, which is why I'm doing this for you, my gift to you, and also to attract attention because I like that kind of stuff, you know, that's my design. Okay, values and relating. What we're looking at, body graph gate two, first line, intuition, sensitivity to disharmony and atrophy. By the way, for those of you who have been with me for a while, you know that when anything is in blue, as you can see, it's in bold blue, it's that way too in our books. Let's see. So here we go. We've got the complete rave I Ching, bold blue at the top of the line. And anytime you have a line at the top, not all of them have this, by the way, at the top of the lines, two lines, the two aspects of the lines, as you can see here, that means that that is something that is learned over time, not gifted with at birth. Okay, the bold blue line is something that is developed over time, kind of like how you grow up. Lavina as a child was not as freaky or different and weird or contagiating everybody. She was just cooing and being happy for the most part. My mom said my I, I never cried. I just made little whimpering noises. Anyway, so <laughs> sensitivity to disharmony and atrophy. I can relate to that. Now here, first line, higher knowing through aesthetics. That's where Mercury and Venus both are. And that, there's the Venus again. See how the Venus is influencing us to the up position of that arrow? the exaltation, higher knowing through aesthetics. However, what's going on in the design? My design is that I can see Mercury is there in gate 14, line six in the exaltation. What is influencing the transit to have also the detriment here in gate two? My own Mercury, as far as how I'm being able to influence, um, not influence, how I'm being able to be aware of the transit's influence on me, okay? How, how I'm filtering the programming field. All of us do this. You either do it unconsciously or consciously, so might as well get hip to the movie and get conscious about it, because it's a lot of fun when you do. Because now, it's, oh, especially if you're a human design geek, now you gotta like, oh, they're talking about this. I can hear the keynotes coming out of that person's mouth or on the news or in my social media feed. By the way, getting rid of Facebook, haven't been looking at it. If you're trying to reach out to me on Facebook, please don't. I can't figure out how to delete it off my phone if anybody has some help with that. Okay, other side of the channel, the urge for action that will ignore the wisdom of the higher self. Yeah, here's where we just, you know, <laughs> go ahead and we're looking for our keys. We can't find our keys. And then all of a sudden, you know, we just kick down the door because we just have to have some action. The wisdom of the higher self is you're not going to find your keys any sooner if you kick down the door. <laughs> Silly example, but hopefully you can recognize it. So now back to what these thematics mean. You can see it's happening in both respects. So we can click over to Mercury and see that the same planetary activations are fixing. We call this fixing in human design. If you have not learned about fixing, you need to take classes, especially if you're doing readings, okay? Because fixing is really, 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 really important. If you memorize or you just read off a page any of these activations here without taking into specific account a person's fixings, you're not giving them themselves. You're giving them a diluted, watered down, bastardized version of themselves. That's why we use the preciseness of the language to articulate what's going on in a person's design. And you need to know this for you too. Okay, so we're looking at what we call fixings, when there's both arrows there, and I'm going to show you one more thing here. If we go over to this, and this is the Maya Mechanics, the more advanced version, I am going to create the same chart. Okay, file, create new, um, I believe it's transit chart. I don't normally do this. Selected rave. Yes, it's me. Okay, hang on. Um, browse, Navina because that will help you see. I'm using this, I believe. Okay, so I'm gonna show you here it, what, it, what it looks like in the fixings. We call it juxtaposition when it's at the extremes like this, when you see a little Star of David, okay? Imagine the uh, triangle up and the triangle down brought together. That's all that is, it's the same symbol. It's just shown differently in my body graph. So what this means, Okay, this is a very important concept I want you guys to grasp. It goes back to our conversation from last week about how unique and special and different you all are. When Ra wrote the rave I Ching, 
he wrote it to the not self, meaning the not self is usually vastly fixed in a not self way to the extreme this or that of the expression of a gate and a line. So he said the biggest mistake he made and the only thing he regretted in labeling the human design system was calling it exaltation and detriment because really it's just a this and a that. So I don't want you to see any of this or that as good, bad, right, wrong. This is how the not self shows up in the extreme ends of the spectrum of the written descriptions that are here. Really, this is just scratching the surface. It's the first step of transcendence. And transcendence in human design means that you allow yourself, your body, to live the life that it was born for and to innately express your inherent uniqueness, which is not fixed unless it is. So as an example, if we go to just Lavina's chart by itself, Lavina's chart, if we could open her up, Lavina. Okay. Um, opening up the right one. Okay, this is the one I'm using. And what you're going to find is that this is the advanced chart. This is the specificity. This is not the generality. What you're going to find is every single activation of a line has a color, tone, and base underneath of it. Line. Okay, line. Color, tone, base. That is the specificity and the preciseness that the human design body graph can give us in revel revelation of the secrets of our own personal genetic treasure map. You start looking at all of the generalities out there on Facebook and Instagram, you're going to get lost. I want you to know there's something more. Don't get caught up in the homogenization and bastardization of the beautiful human design system. There's so much more profundity that is there. Now, you don't have to understand all this to live you. All you need to do is live your type, strategy, and authority, and it starts to breathe you. It becomes you because you are you. You cannot help but be you. And if you just align to your design, you be the you that you were designed to be. Okay, so... Going back to specificity, as you can see in Jupiter, I have a detriment. Please do not look at a detriment as bad or wrong. Again, when it's in your own design, it's specific to you that you absolutely must, in this case, adhere to because Jupiter is our personal law and protection. Okay, so in context, we have so much more richness that we can describe to people in their own design. And going back to the transits, what I want you to see this extreme juxtaposition is something that fixates us when it's symbolized there to the this or the that. When in reality, every single gate has a thousand and eighty different ways, approximately, that it is a point of imprinting of uniqueness. How the heck, I was going to really swear there, but how the heck are people thinking that they're certified in human design when they can't even do this yet. Please, <laughs> I'll get off my soapbox. Please look, don't mislead people, don't misguide people, okay? Don't misguide yourself. This is not bad or wrong. There is somebody out there who is saying that this is the not self, that the detriment is what is bad or wrong. So I'm going back again to what Ra gave us. He said, if he were to change anything in human de design, he would not call it exalted or detriment. He would call it this and that because it really is that, okay? There's nothing wrong with the detriments in your design. However, these are the places where people, homogenized world out there, collective world out there, judges the negativities, perceived negativities of the uniqueness of what this person has to offer. Hi, I'll share a little experience with you. Okay, so Jupiter, personal law and protection, the willingness to be an example for a price. There's always a price that I have to pay when I put myself on display. Because now as a fifth line body with like nine fifth lines in my design, I get projected on. That's the price I pay. So people think that they know me. They think that they can get stuff from me. They think that they can, you know, um, whatever it is that they want from me. They imagine all kinds of things of who I am and I'm anything but those things. They're seeing a very little aspect of what they think I am and I can do. And so 
why is my Jupiter pressured, pressured, fixated in the detriment? Service. Why? Because there's my Earth. And here's my Earth, 8-5. So my Earth is fixating my own Jupiter into the detriment. If I were not willing to be an example for a price, I would not fulfill my own personal life purpose. So can you see how damaging it is for people to say that there's anything wrong with the detriment? The detriment is beautiful. Ross said the detriment is something that he really enjoyed more than the exaltation because they were honest. They are unique. They are different. So do your best to remember to love every aspect of you. When I came to human design, I looked at this design and here's the logical channel of identifying things, being able to be talented and skilled, you know, at being able to identify things, gate 16. And in the not self of coming to human design, looked at that, read that, go, oh my God, projecting, rationalizing backwards into my life. That's what's wrong with me. I don't like being people having to pay a price for being an example. And I projected that into all kinds of different aspects of my life, rationalizing how this right here was what was wrong and bad about my own design. When in fact, it is an inherent key to my own personal wealth because Jupiter, great, good, <laughs> I don't wanna say good because that's a judgment call, but such expansive wealth and generosity from this beautiful, planetary king of the heavens, where should you obey your own law, great good fortune comes into your own life. Hi, example for a price, you bet your bottom dollar, I'll go for that all day. I don't care what anybody thinks about me anymore, but in the not self, sure did, okay? Misidentification and distortion. If you have a 48 and you don't have the other side, if you've got an undefined splenic center. Hi, this is my truth, transformation, and psychology in a center that is all about right now. This gate activation, my Pluto, is why I go into such depth. It is part of my transformation to provide solutions and depth to you for others. Anything in an undefined center, again, this is an undefined center when it's not colored in, the gate activation is something you give. It is a gift that you inherently hold that is unlocked by the other in relational context or in relation to the transits. So what we're looking at is that we have a nodal environment that just shifted. We know that because if you've been watching the transits, you know, because last week it wasn't this way, but you know that the lunar nodes move backwards. So they're always gonna start off with six. Therefore, we know we've just jumped gates into a new movie. The way we see what frames our perspective, that is what the nodal brings, nodal activations bring into your design, okay? So the nodes in your own design are where you fulfill your life's work. The nodes in relationship to the transit is the conditioning frequency that the entire planetary heavens are bringing to our human beings. And so what's going on here in a not self state, the not self of the, and we spoke about it briefly last week, undefined splenic center will hold on to things that are not good for it, particularly people, things, relationships, people, uh, places as far as like this job or that job. No, I can't leave this job. What if I don't find another one? I can't leave this lover. What if I don't find another one? And hey, that's what the fourth line will start to influence you with because fourth line is always about opportunistic activation of um, the, I want to say betrayal, but it's, it's my personal experience, not yours, of the activations of how it shows up in influencing us. Okay, fourth line. Fourth line is about, no, don't leave your lover till you have another lover. Don't leave your job till you have another job. So there is this activation of the transit programming field that is bringing in a lot of fourth line energies here. So in context, relational context to the undefined splenic center, we now have our way of survival instincts, intuitive awareness, and pattern recognition being conditioned by if this transit is turning on the splenic center, conditioned by, in my case, the channel of talent, 
and that's actually down here for me, and here. It's being conditioned by that to influence my not-self mind to think, well, I don't need that anymore. I don't need that anymore. Why? Why don't I need that anymore? Who that person is, where that, you know, that house is or whatever. Oh, because I've got transit activation definition. The mind doesn't know that, but this is what's happening. Because I have feel good now. I can make a spontaneous decision to leave that person and go over there instead. I can make a spontaneous decision to leave that job and go over there instead. I can make it not self again, not self. A spontaneous decision to sell my house and go buy a house over there instead. A lot of the truths that I speak to from myself to you are the way that the mind bullshits you, <laughs> me, you. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience and that's my demonstration of my truth. The b mind bullshits us to think that the mind has the power to make the decision. And so many fantasies and imaginations I've had this week to Mm, change my experience of life when of course my mind knows better type strategy authority wait for invitation wait for recognition wait for emotional clarity and thank god i have a partner in design my husband who has the ability to recognize and help me remember no wait 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 for me clarity recognition invitation energy and energy exchange Okay, so I've done all the centers. I haven't spoken to you specifically about all the gate activations, but I just want to impart one more piece to you before I say bye for now and have a little break before my next class so that I have enough energy to complete it. The most important thing that the transit is bringing to us is the occult knowledge and wisdom of inner truth. And it's one of the reasons um, a few years ago when it was coming, I could hear it coming, I could feel it coming, that coming of the potential drive to find the awareness of inner truth through, and let's see, through the mutation of consciousness. And Pluto right now is moving forward. You can see there's no R right next to it, meaning in the sky, it appears that it's moving backwards, even if it isn't. And that is because to us, we are earth centric. The sun itself, Pluto still moves, you know, around the sun in one way, but to us, earth centric, that is going around the sun ourselves, it looks like it's going backwards. And so right now, Pluto is in a gate of mutation, a very powerful gate we call limitation. And one of the things I want to remind you is that we are all limited, correctly limited, highly specialized, utterly unique. No one is ever born with the exact same precise body graph. No one. I want you to look at this body graph, this advanced mandala, or not mandala, but um, application here, Maya McCanst Imaging, jovianarchive.com. Look under software. In the Maya Advanced Imaging, you are so unique. I'm gonna click on my voice, my personality Mercury, as you can see right here. Gate, line, color. Somebody born, I have a, um, somebody I went to school with was born the exact same day show, and we were in the same grade. So we always, you know, said happy birthday to each other, still do on Facebook. We couldn't be different, more different than each other because all of these planets are in movement constantly. We are all spiraling at incomprehensible speeds through space. The uniqueness that is you does not have to be grokked with the mind. It can't be grokked with the mind. The uniqueness that is you is lived and breathed through you by simply aligning to your design through type, strategy, and authority and it will bring you exactly everything that you need so that you can be in the right place at the right time to discover the life that you were born for. Thank you so much for joining me for today's transit report. I hope this was neutrino news you can use. Lavina Archer signing off for now. Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Please share this video with any human design geeks that you know would love to have your fractal family join us if it's correct for them in our new uh, community, humandesign.life, 
It will give you a great start to your human design experience if you're just wanting to dip your toes in and test the water. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for the connection and the conversation that you've brought to this day. Have a beautiful Sunday. Namaste and bye for now. Whoops, hang on. I see we have questions. So just gonna have an after party for a moment to address these questions and thank you for the comments. Um, I came in five minutes late. Did you talk about the nodes? So uh, I did talk about the nodes briefly and I didn't go into keynoting for both yet. Um, Nils is saying, I find it difficult with some detriments to deliver them as neutral. Yes, without the judgmental collective perception, though I get the point, sometimes a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, it is. It is, and you know what? Um, I teach my analyst te uh, training trainees in looking at the detriments. If you don't address the detriments, you're doing that person a great disservice. I know from being on this side of the table or camera, if you will, of a human being on the other side, that you want to deliver them something good. That sometimes there's this tendency, oh my God, terminal disease, what the hell does that mean? says the not self mind inside of my head about myself. How am I gonna to describe to them that their sun or earth or whatever activation it is, is in the line of terminal disease? It's important to get a very strong grasp in the foundations of the system in order to describe the language in an appropriate way to that person's design. Because that's gonna show up differently, whether it's in this planet versus that, whether it's connected to this planet versus that, whether it's in a defined center or an undefined center. What activation is it? It's so much easier to do this work if you know what it is you're doing. And you can only do that with the practice and the education and the commitment. Hi, I'm a spokesperson of commitment. Commitment and dedication to the experience of human design that can lead you to success, part of the channel of success. I have the wisdom of succeeding where others fail, my friends. Through my trial and error, I teach you from experience. If I'm right for you and you're listening to me, hooray! Come on over, come join us, humandesign.live. Bye for now.